the very first time the fact that two nations and all this concept was spoken of by sir sayed ahmed khan in the 1880s when savarkar was probably not even born or just 4 5 years old so i'm sure he didn't inspire sir sayed ahmed khan to think so but then ever since that time the entire lead up it was not an overnight idea of course in 1857 the two communities perhaps fought together which even savarkar uh, talks about but after the defeat in 1857 the muslims particularly realized the birth of the aligarh muslim movement too that we've done a wrong thing by antagonizing the british so we've deprived ourselves of english education we've also deprived ourselves of government jobs and so on so now let's build bridges with the british government and so since then there was a constant criticism of the congress too and the muslim participation in congress annual conferences between 1885 and 1905 fell from about 15% to about 3-4% by 1905 at the peak of the partition of Bengal which many many Muslim leaders and intellectuals supported that there should be a separate country on the East Bengal. So this constant desire which the Aligarh movement actually envisioned of a separate Muslim unit may not be a separate country at a point but a separate kind of an autonomous unit within the Indian body politic was something that was always a romantic visualization. We romanticize Alama Iqbal but then his conception of the holy state and how that is a virtue to live up to that these seeds of discord the seeds of separateness like i mentioned earlier the separate electorate being given disproportionate representation the khilafat and the way the government was actually acceding to this and the premium that even the congress leaders particularly the hindu leaders were putting to muslim support and participation in the freedom movement made them also up their bargaining power the more you give a person a lot of importance they will try to get a lot out of you and that was exactly what was happening so this two nation theory was something that had been in vogue since the 1880s or since that time because fundamentally a lot of especially the muslim elite could not make peace with the fact that the hindus were their subjects at some point and now to break common ground with them and then in the eventuality of the british leaving for them to be taken over if majority rule is what is going to happen in a democracy so this need for a separateness separate protection of your own fiefdoms uh, that was a constant demand but time and again when even in savarkar's lifetime the comparisons were made that he and jinna were two sides of the same coin and all of that to which he emphatically rejects it saying jinna and i are completely different while he talks for concessions i as in savarkar would look for equal opportunities for everybody and whether it was savarkar or ambedkar they did agree that these were two as i said a clash of ideas a clash of theologies a clash of civilizations and there are two nations so to say as long as according to savarkar as long as there is a larger umma a faith based brotherhood to which people owe allegiance and there is extra territorial allegiance to causes that don't concern india but countries like turkey and other places till that time there are going to be two nations but once that goes and once there is this emotional integration then the two can weld harmoniously and in fact he time and time again says that till the time you keep asserting your muslim identity i will keep asserting my hindu identity the day you drop that i am vishwamanav i believe in vasudev kutumbakam right. so i will right. take 10 right. steps ahead and embrace you uh, so the onus of any relationship any friendship is two sided it cannot be one sided where on the one side people are talking of separateness people are talking not only politically but also theologically where if you do not believe in my way then you are condemned to hell and all of that then union of minds and harmony is very very difficult to forcibly weld together and i think these leaders understood this uh, problem very very acutely so to accuse him of two nation theory and all that is as i said he kept saying that i know that there are two nations as long as there is this allegiance but once that goes we can live together in his hindu rashtra darshan or even in that constitution of free hindustan state that the hindu mahasabha drafted in 1945 the constant emphasis was in this hindu rashtra that he envisioned the majorities are not going to get extra concessions because they were more in number and conversely the minorities also will not get any extra privileges everybody is equal in the eyes of the law your faith is your private business do it in your house don't bring it to the street or into public policy and there's not going to be a state religion of a hindu rashtra it's hindu not in terms of its religious uh, connotation but it's a cultural and a national identity which was what hindutva was for him